All right, in this video, I'm going to show how getting the Revelation 20, the idea of a thousand year millennial reign, is going to screw up your entire way you've, you view the Bible and Bible prophecy. All right, and so um, I'm going to use Chuck Smith as an example. All right, and. Um, probably don't know who Chuck Smith is. He was born in 27, died in 13. All right, so let's take a look at what Chuck Smith says regarding Joel. The book of Joel has three chapters in it. And so let's go just a brief summary of Joel. To give you an idea why this is, um, In my opinion, uh, a good book for understanding Bible prophecy. Let's see how I can approach this here. Let's see. Oh, I know. I know. Hold on a second. Let's do it this way. Here. There's only like 20 verses, so let's do it this way. Uh, you'll notice in the book of Job, Joel, he'll talk about the sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Now that sounds familiar, don't it? Well, let's, let's take a look here. Let's just do it this way. We could go to Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21 and find the same. But to make it easy and simple, let's just go to Mark or Matthew um, 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, we could go to Revelation 20 to find another parallel verse in verse 11 and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them these are all parallel verses okay and so now I contend that the New Testament is going to give you a much clearer understanding of the end time than the Old Testament but the Old Testament certainly goes over it and forecast it and predicts it and all that sort of stuff but it, to me it's just much more clear in the new testament okay so let's take a look at what joel says or uh, not joel excuse me chuck chuck smith let's see what he says here uh regarding the book of joel and i'm going to focus on this middle chapter here the day of jehovah is called the day of the lord in the new testament first thessalonians 5 second thessalonians 2 second peter 3 this day of the lord indicates the starting point of the period which will start at christ appearing in glory with his saints okay so, so far we're good, right? Because when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air, and we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. All right, and the, all the unsaved will be at our feet. All right, and that's when God will send fire out of heaven to destroy all the enemies forever. Okay. So let's continue. He will then come for judgment over the nations to set up his glorious reign of peace. Let's just real quickly, let's take a look at Matthew 25. I'm not going to disagree with what he's saying there, but you can, you can tell he's starting to go off a little bit. You can, I can just sense it. So let's go. I think it was Matthew 31, Matthew 25, verse 31. And maybe I should zoom this out a little more. We'll zoom in one of the two. All right. When the Son of Man 
shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Now this is paralleling the great white throne, is it not? <laughs> this is the throne of his glory, man. This is Jesus coming. You got Jesus coming in verse 11 in Revelation 20. There should be no doubt about it. All right, in, in Revelation 19, verse 11, let's go there real quick. In verse 11, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon it was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. Okay, so again, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, this is when he divides the sheep from the goat. All right, And when he divides the sheep, he draws them up in the air and changes them in a twinkling of an eye. All right, And then the goat he destroys forever. And the goat will be at our feet. All right. And so let's go back here. This to make it clear and easy and simple to understand. All right. And continuing here with Chuck tells us it, and all these verses and you know Matthew 25, Revelation 19, Second Thessalonians 2. You're familiar with that. Um, again, that they shall not come except they're come a falling away first. And that man of sin revealed. Okay, verse 2 actually says that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by the word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. And let no man deceive you by any means for that day now sh shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition now keep in mind this word right here first let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come talking about the day of christ that day shall not come when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and gathers together his elect when he separates the sheep from the goat that day shall not come except there be a falling away first Okay, I mean, this is consistent with everything in the Bible. First, Eve ate from the from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. She screwed up, so God, um, in a way, cast judgment and changed things. And then, same thing in the days of Noah, when man saw the wickedness. Or I'm sorry, when God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. He brought the flood, destroyed the world. First the wickedness come, and then judgment come, right? And just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man, right? Very consistent all throughout, right? And let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, the day of Christ, except there shall come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This is going to happen well before the day of Christ. The day of Christ, the day of the Lord, it's the same thing. So let's continue. All right, and again, tells us that the day of the Lord is preceded. Now, after, after he makes mention of these verses, he then says, and I, I wondered, I had to read this like five times tells us that the day of the Lord is preceded by the total apostasy of the Christendom and by the revealing of Antichrist, the man of sin. So despite everything you just read, Chuck says that the day of the Lord comes before the total apostasy of Christendom in the revealing of Antichrist, the man of sin. I thought, anyway, that has to be an error. No, it's not an error. 
he's saying that the day of the Lord is coming before the falling away. The complete opposite of what we just read here. He's saying that the day of Christ is coming first, and then there's going to be a falling away. And then the Antichrist is going to come. The complete opposite of what we just read. Right, and you'll see, I'll, I'll further expound upon this. All right. And by the revealing of Antichrist, may I send the day of the Lord with its judgment will then come as a thief in the night. Right. It, that's coming after the Antichrist. Right. The judgment when Jesus separates the sheep from the goat. That's coming after the Antichrist. After the falling away. All right, and he comes as a thief in, in the night, uh, consistent with everything we've read in, in the entire Bible. And then, check this out. This will show a, a little bit more of how confused Chuck is. And this is why this is an important subject, because it'll confuse you with the entire Bible, really, because the entire Bible is very simple, very clear about end time prophecy. And again, it's the judgment day is when Jesus separates the sheep from the goat. And he does that when he returns in the clouds of heaven. And we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. And then down below our feet will be the enemy and they will be destroyed forever. Consistent all throughout the Bible. You can go, all, you can go back to Genesis and, and confirm that. Okay. It shall, let's see, Genesis 3.15, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Talking about Jesus when he comes in the clouds of heaven and he's going to stomp on the serpent's head and destroy evil forever. All right. I mean, <laughs> it's all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It's the same thing. And it's... Uh, it's said over and over in many different ways. Okay. And, okay, but now let's listen to what Chuck says. This is why the day of the Lord is not to be confounded with the coming of the Lord to rapture his saints. So he's saying the day of the Lord is not the same as the coming of the Lord to rapture his saints at the end of the actual time of grace. So, He's making it sound like we actually don't have grace right now. There is no grace right now. Yeah, yeah. That's, he's wrong about that. All right, because it is by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So by grace are you saved through faith, right? And so we are saved right now. Whoever believes in Jesus has everlasting life all right okay all right in fact uh, yeah, I mean we need grace right now without it we're doomed and then after we are transformed into our immortal uh, incorruptible bodies do we really need so desperately the grace of God no not not even close. We need it now. We got no chance without it. All right. This rapture is the next event which the believers of this day await. Okay. And you, th you know, throw out a bunch of, you know, if you don't look at these Bible verses, you know, like, well, this guy must know what he's talking about. Well, no, he don't know what he's talking about at all. All right. And let's see, I got 40 seconds. So maybe real quickly. Um, we'll go here to Revelation 20 to show you how confused this fella is. And, and why is this such a big deal? Chuck Smith has been called one of the most influential figures in modern American Christianity. Well, you wonder why are so many people getting this wrong? It's because of people like Chuck Smith. Right? And then... You can see his nose on Revelation 20. Um, 
I'm going to point out one here. I couldn't read the whole thing just because it's so bad. And with Christ in his reign, right there. Get that. So he just doubled up on the reign. He just threw out the reign of Jesus Christ out of thin air. All right. They too will be numbered with the class who reign with Christ in his reign. The, so Revelation 20 makes no mention of Jesus Christ reigning for a thousand years. His reign is forever. Revelation 20 is talking about us reigning with Christ until we are changed forever, right? Until Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are uh, changed forever. This is right here. This is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus reigns forever. So again, you see, Chuck's got it wrong. <laughs>